Hello! It's Bunny Co. And I'm going to do that bloomer pattern that I promised you guys. I mean, you're going to need scissors, chalk, or some sort of marking medium pin, a pattern. We'll get to that later. Um, and fabric. My favorite, favorite pattern is this one here. This is a McCall's pattern, 3854. What I like about it um, is that the edges are straight on the bottom and on the sides. It makes it really easy to extend this way for people who ha are larger, like have a lot of booty or just a lot of waist. Um, it makes it easy to extend this way um, if you want it to ride higher, and it makes it easy to extend off the bottom if you want a longer ruffle. Um, you can use any pattern that comes with a bloomer pattern, like a friend of mine let me gave me one of her patterns, and that's from a costume pattern. Um, I don't like that one as much because the edges are curved on this side, and it's a little bit more difficult to work with. Um, whatever pattern you get, all I highly recommend is like pull it out and take a look at the instruction booklet, and it'll show all the pattern pieces lined out on the fabric, how you're supposed to cut them. Just make sure it has a specific front and back. You'll notice here that this is the front. I want you to look at the crotch line. And then this is the back. And look at the crotch line here. This is important unless, because if you a lot of costume patterns will have just one piece that you use four times for front and back, and they'll all look like the back piece. What happens if you use those is you have a lot of extra space in the front and it looks like you're wearing a diaper. So this is my favorite pattern. It's a McCall's Juniors pattern and you can see the bloomers are being worn on this girl here. Um, and there they are pictured there. And they don't look so pretty um, because they don't really have much of a bottom ruffle. To me that makes them look more diapery, but you could easily adjust that and we'll, we'll, we'll see how. It's actually one yard for all sizes, is what it recommends, in 45 or 60 inches. So one yard should do you. Um, you can get a yard and a half if you want to do cute little ruffles and stuff like that. Um, but that's pretty much all you need. And I'm going to show you how I do it, and you can easily modify it into however you want. I'm going to make these shorter into my bloomer shorts. So I like to have my bloomers sit lower, like where I would wear my pants because it's just that much more comfortable for me. I would like to wear bloomers as shorts and kind of do like an Aero Loli style with like blouses and shorts or bloomer shorts. So that's what we're going to be making this into. Now on my skirt tutorial, I get a lot of questions about what is the measurement this way? But uh, when you go to the store, all fabric is usually on a bolt like this and you have no control over what this length is this is just whatever the length the fabric comes as on the bolt it's usually 44 inches or 54 inches or 60 inches so like whenever I say cut your skirt you know 16 inches this way for length I never mention this distance because it's going to be what whatever the fabric you bought is going to be so, I hope that helps clear up some issues from the latest squirt tutorial. It's not really going to play in, into play here, but I just wanted to point that out since I keep getting questions about that. Oh, I should mention, you should pre-wash your fabric to get any sizing out, and then iron it. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt to get it lined up correctly. You'll see how this is skewed, because if you fold it in half where they cut it, sometimes it'll look all uh, curved at the bottom. Just move it until it's flat. Okay, so I'm going to cut trim off this excess over here. I'm going to trim that off. So this is nice classic Lolita fabric. And you're going to want two pieces of each. So two pieces of the back and two pieces of the front. Easy way of doing that is just have your fabric, the way it comes right off the bolt, fold it in half and put these on. Now what this arrow means, if your uh, pattern has an arrow, that means the grain of your fabric should, or the pattern of your fabric should be going in this direction. So if you look at this fabric, you can see all the flowers have their bottoms down here and the top of the flower this way. If I cut it out like this, all the flowers would be sideways on the bloomers. 
So follow the arrow. So top to bottom with the bottom of the arrow. That's how you want to cut it. And then I'm going to pin this one on down here. I try to butt them up against each other just to save fabric, you know, so that this bottom line will be at the same as that top cut line. Um, but I'm going to cut these mini styles, so before I forget, I design, cut, uh, altered this pattern and put a line where I like it to be. So that's my new cut line. You can just do it to the same as your pattern. Most people i found don't like their bloomers the way I do. They prefer them long, or rather like high-waisted, where they sit up where the petticoat sits. Um, so if you want that, just follow your pattern the way it is. This is going to be exact. It's going to be done exactly the same, so you don't have to worry about altering your pattern to meet match mine. And per always, I super suggest that you watch the entire video before you go out and start buying stuff for it, like fabric and elastic and stuff. Oh, did I mention that you're going to need elastic? Because you are. Um, there are different ways you can do things. If you cut it like this pattern, if you cut it out the way I'm doing it exactly as per pattern, um, what will happen is that you're going to put your elastic casing at the very bottom. And what you can do is you can cut out a different print fabric. Like if I had a mauve fabric like this, I cut out a strip of that and stitch that on the bottom and that would uh, make an extra ruffle for the bottom of the leg. That's what I did with some of my mini bloomers on my Etsy. But with this, I think I might just add it on to the bottom, so I'm going to repin this. How much longer do I want the bloomers to be? So I'm watching the process right here, folks. 5 inches minus an inch for seam allowance. So oh, not even. It'll be really long. It goes for seems good. I'm going to add a 4 inch ruffle. Let's go with that. So chalk. And since I cut this edge, I know it's 100% chill. There's 4 inches. There's 4 inches. Alright. I'm going to line this up with that 4 inch mark. Um, this is a good point where you might want to get some muslin. Muslin is really cheap fabric, usually not folded in half like this, so you might want to get a little extra. And you use it to make a mock-up, which is basically a practice one. Where you sew the pattern in its entirety, as you would for the real fabric, but you get to figure out, oh, well, this is too long on me, or, oh, my torso is really short, I need to take it in an inch. Or, you know, this pattern worked out great, I don't have to modify it at all. Um, but it lets you see what the finished pattern is going to look like and how you might want to modify it without wasting your good fabric on it. And I'm just going straight up here. I really need a new blade on this. It's gotten dull again. Apparently I only record video with dull blades, you know. If you are doing a pattern, there are going to be little tiny arrows, like cut carrots. Um, you're going to want to cut those out, facing outwards, or you can mark on chalk on the actual fabric where those carrots are. And what that does is it, uh, basically you'll find those carrots on another piece of fabric whether it's your front piece or your back piece, wherever it ends up being, depending on what you're selling. And they show you where to match up. It'll say, put this piece with that piece, match carrots. And that's what it's for. It'll match those little carrots. Um, I usually draw them on in chalk on the fabric, but uh, you can also do like a little cutout on this side, depending on who you are and what you prefer. So I just took down a couple inches from here and kind of added it on the bottom to make the bloomer sit lower but have a longer ruffle.
So, uh, what I basically did here, this is the back. And uh, like I did said, I took this down and extended this. And um, I'm going to show you that now we have, like I was saying before, how you want two of each, but opposite. So these are two backs, but they're opposite. So if your fabric wasn't folded, you cut one on the fabric like this, and then turn the pattern upside down and cut another. But since our fabric was folded, we now have two of them. I like to mark the back on the inside with chalk with a B. Because once they're all sewn together, it's a little hard to tell what's back and what's front. It's really easy. Pretty much all pants and bloomers are sewn together the exact same way. Um, you're going to so one front to one back at the crotch seam, uh, right sides together. Um, I just should make a note here that you should finish the edges of your fabric before you do this. Um, and by finish I mean like zigzag over the edge, do a rolled hem, or serge the edge of the fabric. Because this fabric is going to be raw. Um, same with um, pretty much all sides of your fabric. If you want to go ahead and do that now, just serge all of the edges of it, you can. Uh, if you don't have a serger, you can do French seams. Alright, I'll show you guys how to do French seams. Um, it's not that hard. So, we're going to take... This is the front. we got two of them. One front piece, right side up. And the corresponding back piece which is not this one, it's this one. Right sides together, which is the print. And normally, according to this, you put it right sides together and sew. For French seams, it takes a lot more thought. You do it wrong sides together. And you're going to stitch this. But on here, you have 5 8 seam allowance. What that means is that on your sewing machine, there's usually uh, little lines, and one of them will say 5 eighths. You line up the edge of your fabric with that line that says 5 eighths, and you stitch. Since, uh, but since we're doing a French seam, if we did that, this seam would not be right. So I do the first stitch along the edge of my presser foot, which is about a quarter inch. I'm going to do that, and then I'll be right back, and I'll show you the next step, because this is a lot harder to just show you as I go than explain it all, because it's just going to get confusing. So, wrong sides together, stitch here at a quarter inch. Okay, so I've stitched it, and now what we're going to do is we're going to open it up, and just like the picture and the instructions tell us to, we're going to sew it right sides together. First, you're going to want to iron this. I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, ironing makes your life that much easier because this will be so much flatter and you'll be able to see it. So, we stitched it wrong sides together. Now we're going to stitch it right sides together. And this time, um, instead of at a quarter inch, I'm going to stitch it at, like, uh, the next line. Like I said, here, let me show you these lines since it's probably confusing if you don't know what I'm talking about. You see those lines here? Most machines have them labeled. Mine doesn't. My 5 eighths is the third line. So we stitch the first one at a quarter inch, which is right along my presser foot. And now we're going to stitch it the next line in, and that'll equal 5 eighths of an inch. This is how you do French seams. Okay? And what this does is it encompasses the raw edge of the fabric inside a tube where it can't get out so it's not gonna fray and come apart so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch that okay so you see and now when you open it up it's just a seam and your raw edge is completely caught now um, another reason why you want your second stitch to be wider is not only that it'll uh, make it equal 5 eighths but you don't want any of this part that's folded in 
to stick out on the other side. And making, sewing your second one wider kind of guarantees that this part's going to be smaller. The inside part's going to be smaller than where you stitched. So, and this is what it looks like from the other side. And you have your front and your back stitched together. You're going to do the exact same thing with your other fabric. And this is how you, one way of finishing edges if you do not have a serger. Another way is to get bias tape and cover all your hems in bias tape. Another way is very closely zigzagging over the edge of the fabric, which kind of is like an overlock. I'm going to go ahead and do a French seam on this one and then I'll be right back. Okay, so... Now that we have that done, we've got, this is what you should have, the back and the front. Next step is to open these puppies up and lay them right sides together and stitch along this U here. Same kind of deal. If you're going to do a French seam, do it the same way. Me, I'm just going to serge them. Well, I'm going to stitch it, and then I'm going to run it through my serger. Um, French seams might not work as well since it's on a curved surface. I'd recommend using bias tape or zigzag stitch. Um, for you that don't know what bias tape is, you buy it in the store like this, and it's basically fabric that was cut on the bias, which is a diagonal, which gives the fabric able, makes it able to bend easy. And if you get the extra wide double fold, it comes like this, and you can open it up. And what you do is you stitch this, and then you take your bias tape, and you sandwich in, let me see if you can't see that, and you sandwich in the edge after it's been stitched, and then you stitch this on. And in the same idea, the ed raw edge is now encompassed in a tube and it can't fray. Um, I just stitched it. I haven't surged it yet. But I wanted to show you what 5 8 seam allowance looks like. I can't really stress how important this is that you read the pattern. 9 times out of 10 it's a 5 8 seam allowance unless otherwise marked. And it looks pretty big because 5 8 is just over half an inch. And I'm going to go ahead and surge this. You can serge them separately and then stitch them together. I just stitched together first and now I'm going to go and serge. Alright, and this is what it looks like serged. Here. Um, you can serge it straight up to the stitch line. I often don't. But, get all this out of the way. Next step is you open it up this way and then you fold it up this way. Basically, your two front pieces are now stitched together at the center, and your two back pieces are now stitched together at the center. And now you're going to stitch up your side seams. Same concept. This would be great for the French seams. In fact, I'm going to serge the bottom of the leg before I go and serge the top. Same idea, you can use a colored bias tape on the bottom to finish your edge. Or you can do that really tight zigzag stitch to get that um, decorative bottom. Or you can do a rolled hem where you fold it over. Or you can use a rolled hem foot and fold it over. Um, me personally, I'm just going to serge it and then roll it up so it's hidden. And the reason I'm doing this now instead of afterwards is because once we stitch the sides together, your leg hole is formed, and it's a lot harder to do that on a circle than it is on a straight piece of fabric. At this point, the pattern is going to look really confusing, um, especially if it's your first time. But the easiest way to figure it out is to have it where we just made the U. And you can still tell what's the back and what's the front, especially if you marked it the way I do, because the back always has the longer thing to accommodate for the booty. And then you're just going to 
open it up this way and uh, this long piece at the top and the bottom is your leg opening and then you're going to fold it in half the opposite direction this way and then you'll get your side seams over here once you can pull it so I'm going to go do the bottom portion which is like I said I know this looks really confusing and it will be your first time but these, this long thing here that's your leg. That's where your leg's going to go through. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish this edge, and then I'll be back before I sew the sides, okay? Okay. Um, I have just went ahead and I searched all of my edges because I'm going to do it. But this part where we hem up the leg portion is going to be exactly the same whether or not um, you searched it. So I'm going to show you how I did it. Now, if you watch my Lolita tutorial, you know how to do a rolled hem where you where you uh, fold it over once and then you fold it over again. Exact same thing that I'm going to do on this leg opening. You can do that after you've stitched the sides closed if you want. You do not have to do that now. In fact, the pattern has you do it after you have the sides closed. Um, it makes it look a little bit more uniform. Me, personally, I like to do it before I close the sides. It's up to you, whatever you like and whatever you prefer. And I'm going to show you how I do it over here. Like I said, you can wait on this, so if you're not sure which side's the bottom, like I said, it can be really confusing your first time through, just wait. Just wait and do this part next. Alright, so even if your edge wasn't surged, you can do this and this is going to work. Since my edge is surged, what I can do if I want, I can just fold this over once and stitch it. The edge isn't going to fray, and um, you won't see it on the outside. But for education purposes, we're going to do this as if it was not surged. And then you're going to go ahead and fold this over a third time. And the ironing is really crucial. I'm going to go and do a stitch right along the bottom there and stitch that closed. I'm going to do the same for the other leg as well. Okay, so I went and I have hemmed what is the leg portion. Remember, our fabric was like this, right, with the U. I'm going to open this way. And this is now the, your leg. And you're going to take what is the top here and fold it out like this top here. I'm going to fold them in together. So you should have two seams here meeting up in the middle. And then over here, this is our side seam. Now, you can do a French seam like I said before on these. I'm just going to stitch them straight since I've surged my edges. Or you can encompass them in bias tape whatever way that you want to that'll finish the edges. I mean, you don't have to finish the edges, it's just going to fray on the inside. If you're okay with that, then that's fine. Once we stitch them, you're going to have like a pair of really big shorts, basically. So go ahead and stitch your side. Okay, now we have our sides hemmed. And what we're going to do is we're going to press this seam open. We're going to take it over here to the iron and we're going to iron it open. If you did French seams, you can't iron it open. That's fine. Okay, now that you've pressed it open, if you didn't finish your leg holes before, now you go and do that. And you do the same thing. Now that that's pressed open, as you fold it in once and you fold it in a second time and then run your stitch along so it ends up looking like that. Once you've done that, you should have like basically this really big pair of shorts. How do we make these not shorts? Well, you put elastic in the top. This is a pocket I put in. This time we're not showing pockets this time. 
way too much. We already made a whole bunch of uh, alterations to the pattern. I'm not going to go into pockets right now. But that's what this is if you're curious. Um, for the waistband, what I do is I fold this over once and iron it. And then fold it over a second time, iron it, and then stitch along here around this edge. Uh, but leave a gap in the back. And this is the back. That's why we mark it. And how big do you make this waistband? Do you want it to be like that small? Or do you want it to be like this big, like two inches? Well, that's all going to be determined by the size of the elastic that you put in. No roll elastic, standard waistband. This is one inch elastic, so I'm going to need a little bit more than an inch to give it a buffer to get in there. What measurement do you make it? You make it your hip measurement. So what you do to go around wherever you're going to have your bloomers without your pants on hopefully you measure if that's my comfy length right there from here down then what I normally do is I take it in an inch or two to make it snug kind of like I did on the skirt so it kind of grabs me so that's going to help me determine how big to make this so once you iron this over when you go to iron this one in you can just go ahead and be all like, hmm, about there is where I want to do it. And then you can like mark. And then take my measuring tape and be like, how far away is that from the top? It's about four inches. And I go around and mark four inches all the way down and draw a line and fold it over. So right now I'm going to go and I'm going to fold this over. And then we're going to fold, uh, fold that over. But I'm going to fold this over first. Then I'm going to measure and mark. Okay. So I measured out a bunch. And then I use my ruler and my chalk. And I just basically play connect the dots. For approximately how much this is going to be. Fold it over to fit my elastic in there. Now what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take it over to the iron. And I'm going to fold this over. Match it up with that line and iron it all the way around. Hey guys, um, I'm sorry, my memory card got full and I didn't even notice. But you fold this over and you stitch it and you leave a hole, which you can kind of see right here. And then you thread your elastic through that hole. I use the safety pin method, which I was going to show you, but uh, I guess you don't get to see that. Um, you can use a chopstick method like I did in my other one. Just make sure that one end of this, of the elastic, is secured to the shorts via a safety pin or other means and when you push the other side through so that this end doesn't get sucked in. Now once you got both sides hanging out, go ahead and take them and stitch them like this. One flat over the other and zigzag stitch over that. That way when, you, when you're done with that you're going to suck this all back into the waistband and it'll lay flat as opposed to like stitching it like this then you'll have like this nub on you, but if you stitch it like this, it'll be flat up against your back and it won't be a problem. Alright, now that we've stitched that, we're going to suck it all back into the waistband if we can. Shouldn't be much of an issue, it should really want to go in. Now, you're like, well that's great, and now i got some really like skirt pants, but now what? Well, for the bottom part, if you didn't extend the bottom, you just stitch um, elastic into the bottom and then you just have little diaper pants. If you didn't extend the bottom, um, what you could do is get another piece of fabric and stitch that over top. Like finish this edge, finish that edge of the fabric, and then take it and like put it over top. Pretend, let's pretend this is finished. and stitch it here and stitch it here and leave yourself a channel and put elastic in that way and you could have a different color ruffle. But for me, I extended this to be able to have its own ruffle. This will help show me where the original bottom of the pant was supposed to be after seam allowance would be approximately there. And then what I can do that's we're going to bump that up and make it four. 
And I can go around and mark it four inches and draw a line very similarly to the way I did this, but instead of like folding it up or anything, is I'm going to get some bias tape. It's what's called a single fold, where it's flat, like this, where it hasn't been folded in half. And once I have my line drawn on at the right mark, I'm going to put this down, stitch very close to the edges on either side, get some thin elastic, I'm going to slip that thin elastic in there, and that's going to cause the ruffle on the bottom of the uh, bloomers. No ruffling involved, because the elastic does all the ruffling for you. Does okay. Um, if you only have double wide bias tape, that's not too much of a problem. That's what I got. I got a lot of it here. So what you can do is you take it, you iron it open, and then you stitch. So I'm going to go and iron open my tape, and then I'm going to go ahead and stitch it, center it on top of this uh, line here. I'll pin it down, and then I'm going to go and stitch top and bottom and leaving one side, leaving one uh, side open, not closing up the ends, so that I can get the elastic in. Alright, here you can kind of see what I'm talking about, leaving an opening. Okay, I've stitched it down, as you can see. Oh, I still need to trim these. But, um... What you're now going to do is get your elastic. And in the same way that you measured your waist, you're going to measure your thigh. Um, I also want to point out that you don't need to leave a gap. That You can actually have this one flush to the edge of this one, just don't stitch over it. Or if you want, you can stitch over it as well, as long as there's a gap. Um, like I said, it doesn't have to be like that. You can have it, like, butt up, like, flush like that, as long as you can get into it. And in the same way that we threaded through the waist, we're going to thread through here. So, for the safety pin method, pin one edge to the skirt, or pants, or whatever. the other end through the elastic and then you just start pushing it through All right, in the same way as you did with the waistband, you're going to overlap your elastics and zigzag stitch and then put it back in the casing. Okay, once you have your elastic in, then you got your bloomers. They should fit pretty good. Like I said, mine are designed to fit just below the belly there. And they fit exactly where I want them. That's what your back looks like. You can pull these up if you want them to be a little poofier. But that is what your bloomer shorts should look like. I fully recommend, if this is your first time making bloomers, find a pattern that has a bloomer pattern, get some muslin. Make it exactly to what the pattern says with the muslin the first time. Try them on, and then decide from there whether you want them to be shorter, or longer or wider and then alter the pattern and uh, do it after you do your first muslin mock-up. But that is how you make a pair of bloomers and I hope that helps and I hope I was pretty clear on the instructions. If you have any questions please put them in the comments. I will do my best to respond to them. Also if you could please do me the common courtesy of reading the comments before you ask your question uh, just to see if someone else has already asked that question and I've answered it. If I haven't answered any questions like what you're looking for, just go ahead and comment. I do my best to respond to them in a timely manner.